Let's talk about GDevelop, a no-code, open-source, and lightning-fast game engine that will allow you to create any 2D game you can imagine. Let me open up the engine, and I'll show you just how easy it is. And while I could start from a template, for this I'm going to create a new project. I'm going to randomize until I get a good sounding name, something like Smooth Steel. The first thing I need to do is go to the project manager and change some settings. I'm going to change the game's resolution to 1920 by 180 and then turn off anti-aliasing because I'm going to use pixel art. Next I'm going to go over here on the right into the object panel and click to create a new object. The engine has an asset store with both free and paid assets that you can download for your project. But you can also click to add objects from scratch. You can pick from sprites and panels and particle effects and text objects and so on. But for now I'll just create a sprite. I'll call it player and then add in some frames for an idle animation. I'll call this one idle and set it to loop. Then next I'll add another, call it run and set that one to loop as well. Then I can drag the tiny player into the game scene. Next I'll create a tiled sprite which is an image that will repeat when expanded. And now we get into one of the most powerful features of GDevelop, Behaviors. We can open up the player object, go to the Behaviors tab, and click to add a behavior. In this case we want to give them the platformer behavior, and give the tiled sprite the platform behavior. And now I've got a tiny little character who's able to walk back and forth and jump using the arrow keys and space. Behaviors are prepackaged game logic that you can slot into your game to add mechanics that would otherwise take a long time to make yourself. And the engine comes with a bunch of them pre-installed, like top-down movement, late behaviors, and a physics engine. But you'll find over a hundred extensions that you can install that were created by other game developers in the community. And for even more extensions, you can click Project Manager, go down to Extensions, and then click to search for new extensions. These extensions can range from firing a bullet to an entire health system or touchscreen joystick controls. But back to the example. I'll add an apple sprite object to use as a pickup. Then I'll turn on the grid and make sure everything is lined up properly. Next I'm going to add a text object, but I want to use it as UI. So I'll open the layers panel and click to add a new layer and I'll call it UI. Then I'll select that instance of the text object and open the properties panel where I can change a number of things about the object, but I'm just going to change its layer to the UI layer. And the last thing I'm going to do is add another child sprite as a background. I'll put it in scene, and then with the properties panel, change its Z order to zero, so it goes behind everything. Now to get to the no code part of this no code game engine. If we go to the event sheet, I'm going to go quickly through this because there are other short tutorial videos that go over each point of the engine more in depth. So if I click to add an event, I can set it up so that at the beginning of scene, we center the camera on the player object. And then we'll change the camera zoom to 4. And then next, we'll add another action with no condition that will change the camera's X or horizontal position to be centered at the center point of the player object. So now the camera follows the player, but the player still isn't animated yet, so we'll fix that. First we'll create two events, where if you're pressing left or right, we'll set the animation to run. And then we'll add these two actions so the player will flip based on which button is pressed. And then finally so that they'll stop running, we'll add another event where if the left and right button are not pressed, we'll set the animation back to idle. And now to actually pick up that apple, we'll create an event where if the player is in collision with the apple, we'll change the scene variable score by adding one to it and then delete the apple. And then to change the score text, we add an action to change the text to score plus the variable. And then as a final touch, we're going to click to add an action, search for play a sound, and we could import our own if we want to, but GDevelop comes with JFXR built in. Click to create a new sound, and then play with this until we get something we like. And then when we do, we just change the name and save it. GDevelop's no code system is very easy to understand. We can go back to those templates I was talking about earlier to showcase this. For the platformer example, you can see that if the player is in collision with the fly and the player is falling, allow them to jump again, simulate a jump, and play a sound. And then in the Conviction of Gun Dude template, 
you can see that when the ghost's animation is set to charging, and then the animation finishes, it creates the bullet at the ghost, and then moves it towards the player with a force. And then speaking of easy, GDevelop offers online services that make it easy to create and manage things like leaderboards and player accounts. And then whether you've made your game from scratch, or built off of a template, you can publish and share your game with just a few clicks. Either by clicking here, to generate a private or public browser link using leluo.io, GDevelop's game hosting platform, or click over here to export your game for web, mobile, desktop, or as a Facebook instant game. That covers the basics of GDevelop, but before you go off to build your game, it's a good idea to watch the rest of our intro tutorial videos.